Okay, y'all grab a seat. All right. Okay. Hey, um, listen. Okay. Here we go. Hey, there are a bunch of seats down in the front, y'all, right? So it's a lot of space down here. You don't feel like sitting right next to someone and spreading germs. Okay, so I, I want to make a couple of announcements before we get going. First off, we do not have class on Thursday. And that means no one's going to be in this room on Thursday. And everyone... Everyone is going to write a video or watch a video and write a class reflection assignment. Three separate essays. Okay, good. And those essays are due. Yeah, this is the important thing or not. They're due the Tuesday after we're back from break. It's 6 p.m., so our next class after break, they're due at 6 p.m. on that day. Okay, next one. Uh, effective immediately. I said this last class, but all if you have any issues with selfies, any issues with your attendance, you need to turn in a selfie. They're due 48 hours from the beginning of class. Okay, hang on. Hey, there's seats in the front here. A bunch of people are volunteering, so they're going to pop up. Uh, finally, next one, um, exam two is confirmed for March 21st. We good? It's in the syllabus. All right, here's the next thing that I want to say before we put the next slide up and then we're going to start class. Yo. Here's what's up. Um, don't share the code today with anyone who's not here. Okay. Number two, um, if you're leaving early today, make sure you see the attendance TAs in the back. Like if you have to leave. For whatever reason, I don't know. I'm sure they know about it. And number three, if you have an issue with taking attendance right now, just for today, and you have to take a selfie, email it to Julie at the staff email, okay? Cool? Do it soon. You got 48 hours. All right, man. Let's do attendance. So listen. Uh, good. Hey, um, hopefully we have a little bit of time for some questions today. We're talking about white people, um, but talking from a non-U.S. perspective. So I think, it, uh, I don't know, I think it's really interesting. We have a, a number of students in class who can represent white people from outside the United States. So it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. It'll be interesting to see where we go. Um, I have no idea what anyone's going to say or what we're going to talk about, but so I'm really looking forward to the class. And that's it. Uh, I do want to take up a couple questions from the stream, so if anybody has one, let me know. Okay. Are we good? Everyone's in? Locked in? All right, man. Uh, yo, volunteers, let's go. Let's, uh, yo. Next slide. <laughs> yeah.
All right, man. I, yo, how? Okay, here we go. Yo, how about that for a title? Is that a cool title? <laughs> Dude, this, these, all right, you ready? Bro, these, bro, these are the whites right here, the whites. <laughs> the, you know, the only reason that I continue to teach this class, actually, to be honest with you, is because um, I just like, like making up titles to classes. Otherwise, if I couldn't make up titles and... And Nish actually made up Thursday's class title. Um, and by the way, Thursday's, Thursday's class, the video will be ready tomorrow morning. So we'll put it out on Canvas and we'll send it to you. You'll find it on the website. All right. Hey, can you, um, by the way, can you introduce yourselves and say where, like, where you're from, how you represent the whites? Yeah. Uh, my name is Sapir. Um, I'm an American and Israeli, um, junior entrepreneurship major from Asheville, North Carolina. American and Israeli, you spent a lot of time in Israel. Yeah, I've spent a, a bunch of time there. I go uh, every year, every other year. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, hey, my name's Aiden. I'm a senior in mechanical engineering. Um, Australian American, but I spent about 13 years in Australia until college, really. All right. So you're representing the Israeli whites, the Australian whites. Hi, uh, I'm Andres. I'm a junior finance major. I was born in San Francisco, but I lived in Quito, Ecuador, uh, since pretty much the age of seven until I graduated high school. Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I'm from Dublin, Ireland, and I'm a criminology and psych major. And so you are representing the, the Latino whites, bro, Andres, and Rebecca, you are representing the Irish whites. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right, man. So let me say a couple things when we talk about the whites, what we're talking about here, so we're on the same page. Obviously, we could be talking about many, many different things. Uh, can, you go, can we go to the next slide, though? Um, so two colleagues, two friends of mine, actually, put this together. And let me just say something about white is a reference to skin. And let me just say something about this, like, so we get some kind of sense of what we know about skin. Um, Human beings, just looking at this map over here, um, Homo sapiens emerged in the Nilotic region of Africa, okay? The original two-leggeds, us, the original two-leggeds had dark skin, and as we moved out of the Nilotic region, this is the equator right here, so just follow the equator right there. This is Ecuador right here on the equator. That's where Andres lived for much of his life. And it just comes across here, right? As people, the reason we have dark skin is there's an adaptation, a DNA adaptation. And the skin, like, does anyone want to say this? Do one of you know? Do you know the story? Any one of you know the story of skin? Huh. All right. So the idea is that the sun has always been dangerous. It's not a new thing that people get skin cancer. The sun's always been dangerous to people. And, you know, people didn't have hats and people didn't have clothes. And, and, and so, you, like, you know, you really are going to be protected somehow. Well, the, own, the body naturally is going to develop a protectorant, a way of protecting against the ultraviolet rays of the sun that are going to give us cancer. And so what happens is the body produces one enzyme called melanin, which just happens to also turn the skin dark. And, but it protects us. And it is, but, but we need sun because sun is really important for calcium and vitamin D. So you got to have a certain amount of sun, but you can't have too much. If you get too much sun, then you run into this pro the problem of UV rays and potentially getting skin cancer. And so what happens is, as we move away from this area, 
where the body needs to have dark, lots of melanin, high doses of melanin to protect us from the ultraviolet rays of the sun, as we move away from there and go north or go south, what happens is we need the body to produce less melanin. So that, and then what happens is the body lightens. So notice how the further away you go, up in this area and in this area, in the south, people have lighter skin. And so that's an adaptation. So you don't, if you're, if you're living in this area where you don't, you're not going to get a lot of sun and you have really dark skin, that's a problem because you're not getting enough of the sun's rays to produce sufficient amounts of calcium and vitamin D. And if you're living in the area close to the equatorial area where you're going to get lots and lots of sun, if you have light skin, you're going to need to be protected all the time from the sun, from the sun's rays. And so hence, now we can do that. We have, you know, sun lotion and sunscreen and we have clothes and hats and all sorts of things, right? So that's the first thing when we talk about the whites. Uh, the second thing is just kind of look at the countries here, the percentage of countries, populations that are white. Okay, so all of these countries we don't consider white, um, but very white to not very white, okay? Um, and so this is... Uh, just kind of note that this is what we're looking at. So here's Australia, right? Here's Ecuador, right here. There's Ireland. And Israel is right in there. Okay? Got it? So this is how we're, this is how we're going to roll. All right. But now we're just going to have a conversation. You can just block in the screen. Okay, y'all. Um, first question. Um, Rebecca, you go by Rebecca, right? Not Becky. Um, so what's considered white? Like who's considered white in Ireland? I mean, a very large po uh, part of the population is white. I would say probably 80%. Um, but pretty much if you're white, you're white. Do you guys, do you talk about it? Do you talk about being white? It's gotten more popular, like, as more immigrants have come in to the country, but I feel like it's just a norm to be white, so, in Ireland. Uh-huh. So for you, um, wait, hang on. Just back, back off just a little. Hey, Niche. So, meaning that you, is white a term that you use in Ireland? Not, not as much as here. Uh -huh. Like, I feel like here it's a lot more like you go, you, you, at home you don't kind of say your ethnicity as much as you do here. And like, just on a day to day or when you're filling out like a form or things like that. Uh huh. So that's a, like a, and so it's becoming more and more popular, you say, or more common. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, what are the, do you guys have any stories about white people? Like, is there a history of white people or a story of white people or something that you kind of hang on to? Or? I think, like, the, we don't fight over races as much at home, but it's a lot about religion and religion more so. Yeah. So I feel like that kind of, like, takes over more so than your ethnicity or race. It's more so you go by, like, your religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the conflict in Ireland yeah. has really been, uh huh, the the unionists and the nationalists. Yeah. Hey, uh, Andres, how about you? Like, how is who's considered white? And let's we're going to talk just Ecuador, your Ecuador experience. Okay, I mean, I, I I guess I'd say whoever looks white is probably considered white, because, I mean, a lot of the friends I had they weren't necessarily dark skinned but they weren't as white as, as I am, at least by color of skin. But, um, and a lot of the people in Ecuador aren't 100% Ecuadorian, like, purely. It's huh? a lot of Spanish ancestry, and there's a lot of what we call mestizos, which are a mix between the original, like, the Spanish who came in during the conquest and then the original Ecuadorians who lived there. So do you guys, do you, guys, do you talk about people as being white or being los blancos? I mean, I don't. Uh, it certainly isn't something I do just because I guess I'm part of that group, but I certainly have been referred to as 
un blanco. I mean, a lot, you know, more than uh -huh. more than like once. Is that, I mean, is it common in a way? Like, yeah, uh, but more than. I mean, there's a lot of Americans in Ecuador, just because there's a lot of Americans yeah, yeah, everywhere, yeah. man. But um, I guess I, I I've been referred to more as gringo than blanco. It's uh -huh. not about me being white. It's about me being American. Oh. Okay, so here's, this is important in Ecuador. So starting about 20 years ago, many, Ecuador switched to the dollar, right? And you, so you used to have a currency called the Sucre, and you switched to the dollar. And then um, as a result, and then opened the borders up, so many Americans came and started retiring there. So now you got these Americans walking around, and you have you walking around who's Ecuadorian-American, and very different. Do people see you the same way as they see them? As they see the, the Americans who went there to retire? Yeah. yeah well, yeah. I mean, I, I can't say what they're going to think of me just looking at, like just by looking at me with their first yeah. impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I assume if they came to know me, they'd understand that that's not the case. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and, and also because my father is Ecuadorian. Yeah. So it's, it, it's not, I'm not just like. You know, like a, I mean, I'm not like both white parents from the United States just going to Ecuador. Okay. It was more like a, I was just going there because my family has. Wait. Hey, wait, hang on a second. First off. Also. Hey. We're good? You hear that sound, bro? You hear that sound, bro? You like that sound? Yeah, I like it. Okay, listen, bro. Um, Andres, what's the story of what? Is there a story of white people in Ecuador? In, it's in, common. In what sense? Like, Just like, wh what's the white position? The elites in Ecuador mostly all look like you, except in Guayaquil, right? They look like you and I. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, I, I guess it depends on what you, how you define like the elites. Do you mean like the top earners in yeah, the country? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know what the list looks like in terms of who's the most, who's on the top of the socioeconomic ladder. But I'd say that they're all either white or mestizo for the most part. Uh huh. Um, uh -huh. But I mean, there's there there is a huge influence. Like the influence can't be understated uh, when the when the Spanish people obviously came in the in the 1500s and yeah and and conquered uh you know pretty much the whole continent i mean except for brazil but um i, I don't know if there's necessarily a story about whiteness but there's whiteness sort of almost like built into the but when people talk about la conquista right the spanish coming and conquering do they talk about the spanish as white people as europeans they talk about europeans coming right? yeah but they, do they, does skin come into it, or is it just kind of Europeans? I, I guess it'd probably depend on who, you, on who you're talking to. But okay, all right. It's probably Europeans for the most okay, part. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. A Aiden, how about you? What, what's who, who's white? Well, as you showed, majority of the population nowadays in Australia is white, but it's the history of the country isn't embraced in that obviously indigenous australians weren't white mm -hmm. and there's still a significant population but ultimately the country is predominantly white now and that's how what you would deem considered average when walking in the streets or in the schools mm -hmm. that would be seen as the social norm when looking at the population and, okay and what's the story of white people in australia well technically they're either immigrants or descendants of technically convicts from England is the story of white people in Australia. Uh -huh. the, indigenous, yeah, the indigenous Australians were eventually kind of, it's not a very nice history in Australia, uh -huh. we're being completely honest. Like it was what they did to the Aborigines wasn't particularly, it's you get, not, how, not too how, far Do you guys stretched. talk about it a lot? How often is, do you talk about it? Like in schools and? Um, we have to do, at least in my school, we did two years of history of the Aboriginal Civil Rights Movement and the American Civil Rights Movement on top of that. After we did them kind of in a comparison, kind of saw the contrast and the similarities uh -huh. between the two. But then also you have, in your earlier years, I think around grade seven, eight, you started to learn about the, um, 
the Stolen Generation in Australia, uh-huh. which was kind of the, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Uh-huh. It's kind of Can the, you um, just say what it is? The briefly? Stolen Generation is when Aborigines were kind of put into camps almost, and they tried and to... Aborigines are the indigenous, the indigenous Australians were put uh-huh. into camps, and they were kind of, they basically were tried to breed them out in a way, and it wasn't very, that's a simple, a very simple overview of what it was, mm-hmm. but then... They were referred to as the stolen generation as the kids were taken from their parents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's kind of the, so the story of why is all, they're all basically of British descent and they came over when the British uh-huh. first went to Australia. So do you reference, do you refer to yourself in Australia? Do white people refer to themselves as white? Yes. Yeah. Mm, well, honestly, it's, everyone calls themselves Australian. Like it's not British Australian. Yeah. It's just Australian. So you, so you have a way of wanting to distinguish. Australian white people have a way of wanting to distinguish yourselves from British white people. Kind of like the Irish. You have a very similar thing, right? You want to distinguish yourselves from British white people, right? So if you say white, then it's like, wait, hang on, a white, then that kind of aligns you with the Brits. And yeah, I would agree. Like... If you just watch a simple sporting event, you can see they distance themselves from the British as yeah. much as possible. Okay, yeah, all right, I got that. Huh. How about in Israel? I mean, on, on what, like... Uh, so, what's, what, so what's considered white? Are, is, are, white yeah. is, are you They're, considered white in Israel? Yeah, I, I'd say so, because um, I'd say that it's, like, kind of sectioned off in, like, Ashkenazi and like uh, Sephardic, uh-huh. meaning like more European or like uh, Northern African. So, I mean, you can kind of tell who's Sephardic and who's Ashkenazi. Um, so it's, it's more easy to tell that way. And then like, I don't know, if you are a little like shade different, you can kind of figure out where or like which region they're kind of more so from. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah. and so like to be clear, right? So Ashkenazi mm-hmm. Jews are Jewish peoples who are descendants from European Jews. Yeah. Right. And so meaning that the the, the lineage goes in so many different countries. Yeah. Well. There's so many uh, more like I don't know Polish, German, Austrian, that whole area. Uh huh. And there's a lot of Jews that are just like, or like Israeli people that just like look white, but. And, Okay, and so what is the, what kind of conflicts, or or what kind of conflicts exist on the basis of white people, white Jews, just stick with Jews, forget about Arabs, Palestinian, uh, uh, Palestinian Israelis, okay? Um, What kind of divides are there between white Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, and Sephardic Jews? what, What kind of like, what kind of it's, distinctions are, forget, forget I said conflict, distinctions are, do people make? First thing it would probably obviously be skin color. Uh-huh. It's, I mean, it, they're different shades, yeah. Uh-huh. So, so people make those distinctions? Uh, yeah, you make assumptions. Rather, there, are there assumptions uh, yeah. about one being more advanced than another or one being better than? Or? Mm, I wouldn't really say that. I just, you could kind of assume like, oh, this person's either like Moroccan or like, Sudanese, something like uh-huh, that, uh-huh. And just kind of based off of their skin color, and like you've you like meet people from that like country, so you kind of pick up on how they look. Got you, got yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, that's my experience in Israel. By yeah, the way, yeah. is that there's a much more of a sort of a blending of of different groups. Hey, um, so go. I want to go back. What do you guys notice about white Americans, about whiteness here in the U.S.? We'll start with you, Rebecca. Like, what do you, when you think about white Americans, like how they talk about it, how they are, et cetera, et cetera, what do you notice? What stands out for you? I think it's really different because there's such a large population of white people, and I think like different classes talk about it differently. Um, but I think like Americans here, when they're white, it's kind of a pride. And 
I think like almost like it's like could be like a second or third thing they say when you meet them. But I think there's a lot more emphasis on being white here when you meet someone. When you say emphasis, you mean like pe people, they, they bring it into the conversation? Yeah, yeah. How so? Like, what do you hear? Yeah, I mean, do you have an example of that? Or do, maybe do any of you have an example of that? Or, do, or hang on, let me just pause that, actually, unless you have an example. It's hard to have. It's one of those things you yeah. see, but you don't necessarily have an example. Yeah. Does anybody want to add on to what Rebecca just said about Americans sort of bringing whiteness into the conversation? Well, I, I was going to say, I feel like, especially now in the United States, people bring race into pretty much everything, whether we like it or not. And whiteness happens to be one of those things that they just bring in. And, and I'm not, I don't necessarily think it's just white people who talk about whiteness. I feel like yeah. everybody talks about whiteness. So, I mean... What do you hear? What What are the common things that you hear people saying about whiteness here in the United States? Well, I mean, the, I mean, one of the, I don't, I don't know whether to call it a good thing, but one of the things about, you know, social media and being connected all the time is that you can hear people who are extreme on both sides. So you know, you can hear people about, you know, you can hear people, in God knows where they are, talking about how great it is to be white and you know how uh -huh. great they feel being white and how whiteness is awesome and everything. And then on the other end, obviously you can hear people talking about how, you know, they view whiteness as, as, as something not necessarily to be proud of. It seems to me that one common thread here in the United States among white people is that most white people have learned or don't feel proud about being white don't feel any pride connected to it, right? It's kind of like, it, it's very similar to in, in Australia. Most white people don't feel pride, but they don't, so as a result, they sort of feel, there's almost, it's more shame than pride here. Do you, can you, anyone want to add to that? Yeah, I think it's because of how other countries kind of view America in a way. So like, I don't know, often Americans are kind of posed as like, I don't know, obese, white people that just sit around and like do nothing all day. So I feel like maybe that has something to do with it. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm just American type of thing. It's just... mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna res I want to respond to that in a second. Somebody else. Aiden, do you have something like this idea here? Look, we, okay, here, I'm going to contextualize it for a second. We have a really unique, actually, our racial history is similar to, to yours, and also similar, the, the problem is Spain, the, 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 the conquest of the Americas by the Spanish, you know, we struggle with Spain and Portugal, right? Are you, are you all white people or are you not white people, right? But, but there's like the elites that are more white connected to Europe, and then there are the southern Spanish and Portuguese and so on. But the idea is we have a really unique history in that it's Europeans that came and created, started creating this concept of race because race is very much a European created concept. And the, the development of race as a term goes right along with slavery. Like you can't, you know, this is a, an example when we, in sl slavery has always existed in the world. There's always been slavery. Slavery is just, taking somebody from some group and saying, you're going to now be part of our group and you're going to work for us. You're going to be part of us. You're going to do something I want you to do. And I'm going to pay you very little money or pay you no money at all. And I'm going to force you into some kind of relationships of some type of bondage. That's always existed and always existed because Life is really brutal and short, man. And people, you need other people to be part of your groups, especially the smaller the groups are. And most of human history is hunting and gathering groups. You need other people to be part of you. So when you meet another group and you can conquer them, they become part of you, but then they become part of your group, right? They don't, they don't just become outsiders. They really often become. So the person that could be a slave very quickly is not a slave anymore. But sometimes they really truly are slaves. And based on whatever 
characteristics you could have. But Europeans did this thing that people had not done before, which is enslave people on the basis of their physical characteristics and where they were from. So if you're going to go to Africa, you're going to go to this continent, you're going to take these people, and you're going to bring them to the Americas, and you're going to say, you're going to, we're going to force you to work for us. You're going to force you to be in bondage here. You have to have some kind of reason to put them in bondage. And the reason then becomes, well, you're inferior, and we know you're inferior because you look like this. And so that just hadn't happened in history. Like, just had not happened. So we created this really wild story, wild history here. So the whole race conversation, when we talk about white people, it's all connected in that way, right? So now the question is, white people, now that there's been this kind of, uh, you know, c- coming, hang on, I wrote it here, uh, this, this, dishonorable sort of way of seeing whiteness, which has happened in Australia, and it's happening in Ecuador and places in South America. It's really hard to stand up and be proud to be white or something like that. I mean, it's really difficult, right? So now, this is what Americans are grappling with. So what do you all see? Like, you can't stand up and just be like, hey, I want to talk about my whiteness. Because whiteness comes along with a certain kind of shame or a certain kind of, like, it's not good to be white. Bro. Well, I was going to say that, I mean, there's definitely a a component here where, I mean, there were people in the past in, in this country who maybe put a bad name on being proud of being white because they were being proud of being white for the completely wrong reasons. I mean, that you know, they were like, you know, I'm white and, and I'm better than everybody else. Yep, yep. So I, I think it's, under, I mean, I don't know if it's understandable, but there certainly is a feeling that if anyone who's white expresses their pride, or maybe not even pride, just, just the fact that they're white, it's almost like, a, wait, are you, are, you, are you trying to say that, that you're like them? That you're, yeah, yeah, pr- yeah. you're, you're proud of because your, you're white and because everybody else is inferior? Or like, what's the reason, you know? Right, so if you, any, any acknowledgement of some kind of pride to be white is proud Pride to be a part of the conquering group. And that's seen, and you can't do that. But you could be proud to be Irish, right? Or, and that's okay, as many Americans are. Irish are really quite. Which is also interesting because, like, as you just said, like, I feel like in Europe, we judge America for being whites, being racist, or whatever. But I think a lot of people don't know that it actually stemmed from Europe. But people in Europe are like, oh, like, I'm proud to be Irish. I'm proud to be British. But when America do it, it's wrong because we think that that's where racism comes from. But that's not actually where it comes from. Okay, right. Okay, so Americans can be, I'm proud to be American. But proud to be white is something else. Yeah. Bro, so this is in, in Australia, right? Like, you got, have you had the, you've had the public shaming of white Australians. I wouldn't necessarily say, like, we've, it's very similar to America, and I would say, kind of building off what you were saying, like, I've never really heard someone say, I'm proud to be white there, but Uh the line that comes out of that is, I'm proud to be Australian, which I think is similar to here, and I wonder, I've always wondered if that's extending from, like, is that because we see our normal person, like I mentioned earlier, as being a white, so we just say that, we assume that by saying that, it's like an indirect way, but... I think it's very similar along the lines of America. Like I didn't, coming here, I didn't see it as like a big difference yeah. in how we've, it doesn't really come up a lot. Like I haven't heard anyone here particularly say yeah. what you said, or back yeah. home, for instance. But is it, okay, but back home, is there kind of a shaming that white people experience? Like that you, because dude, let's be clear. What happened to the Aboriginal peoples in Australia is similar to what happened to indigenous American Indians here. I mean, the slaughter, the, really a, a genocide, right? The killing. So when you say I'm proud to be Australian, do people link that with, yeah, but dude, you Australians who are mostly white, because that's what you're talking about. Do, when people say that, are they, A, including the indigenous peoples into that analysis, into that group? And B, are they saying it with an awareness of what, 
the white Australians did to the Aboriginal people? I would say for us, it's the reason people can say it differently than here is because not as many people know our history uh, of what happened uh -huh. and the negative connotations associated with basically, and it's not always true. Like there was a ton of immigration to Australia in the late 20th century, but that's kind of what white Australian extends from. And obviously there's a huge islander population, people from Papua New Guinea, yep. uh, Maoris from New Zealand, but... And I think there's cultural diversity in that as well, uh -huh. who come in and they're just as Australian as anyone else. Mm -hmm. But I do think that there's a negative undertone associated with, like, I think our best instance is Australia Day, the day of celebrating, like, when the English arrived in America. It's like our equivalent of Fourth of July. Yep. And it's technically celebrating that our the arrival English is celebrating the, basically, annihilation of when the when the when the english arrived in australia yeah you're which is celebrating the annihilation of, of yeah basically the beginning the of beginning that. of it yeah yeah and i don't do think people it's, talk, do people talk about that it's become a topic like more and more in the last 10 years uh -huh. like i know there were protests on australia day like quite for, there's protests on australia day yeah i but, saw i was watching some last mm -hmm. year actually on that but okay but here to be clear right in the united states it's not, Native Americans don't have the power. The indigenous Americans don't really have the power to push that conversation. It's black Americans that have had the power just to really critique white people. But like, if you say I'm proud to be white, the indigenous, nobody, people, the next statement by people critiquing that isn't, or I'm proud to be American, isn't from the perspective of Native Americans. It's from the perspective of black Americans and slavery. And you guys didn't have that. You just had the indigenous people who you can kind of push to the side more easily. Huh. Do you? If you could say, can you go back to just some observations you have about white people here in the United States that you do as white people from outside the United States? Any other observations that you have? Like what I'm talking about in terms of this kind of shaming. Dude, first off, most white people don't even see this. Like most of you who are white, you, you, have, you have drank from the chalice most of you, the chalice of guilt and drank so much of the guilt of just like that you've learned most of the, the generation of white people in here. You've learned this narrative about race in the United States that white people did all sorts of bad, mischievous, nasty, evil things to black and brown people and that white people, y'all should be ashamed of that. And you kind of learn, and it's not like a, it's not an overt shaming, but it's just like that you can just link white to bad. Like who wants to be bad? Like you can, we can make fun of white people there's so people, we make so much fun of white people. Black and brown people make so much fun of us, and it's just okay. We just take it because it's just part of what it is to be white. You just got to take it. And we've sort of learned some of this. And then, of course, there's no pushback to say, like, or it's very difficult to have pushback to say, wait a minute, hang on, the history is actually more complicated because the moment, if you start really questioning the history in some way, then you sound like a racist. You say, like, I can't be a racist. I got to be anything but a racist. So therefore, I'll just, like, accept a certain narrative, not even being certain what that narrative is. And that's this conversation about white. Like, white, things related to white people aren't good. They're not necessarily bad. They're just not good. It's just part of it. Donald Trump has been able, you, Donald Trump has opened up the doorway to white people starting to stand up and be like, ah, 
fuck, God, I'm tired of being ashamed of being white or whatever the case is. So do you guys see any of that here? I've, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. I think that like, especially in Ireland, like people that don't know that much about America will kind of judge America as a whole by people like Donald Trump or, or people that stand up for whatever. But I think like when you get here and you get to know people actually like from my experience, like American people are some of the nicest people I've ever met and that's for all races. So I think that like from smaller countries like Ireland and especially other countries in Europe that a lot of white people or just America in general get based off of the kind of bigger names and things that are seen in the media, but they actually don't know what it's like to be over here and like live the lifestyle and live and be your best friends be American. And I still think like even when I go home and, and I talk to people at home, like they still have the same stereotypes about Americans and it's just like any other stereotype in the world. And what's their stereotype of white Americans in particular? I just think that the biggest stereotype is like they're full of themselves and whatever, but like white Americans. Are. Yeah. It, but not, not in the sense of like being white or anything, just in the sense of like, just that's just the stereotype that they have. You have white Americans. Uh huh. Uh huh. Bro, how about, how about you? Um, do you have anything? I want to go back to this kind of shaming because I don't experience this in, I have never experienced it in Ecuador and I don't experience it in Colombia where white people, because essentially white, because you're white. I mean, we're going to call you white, right? You're Ecuadorian. Here you're Latino, but you're, yeah, you're half Latino, right? But do you sense the shaming here of white people, like a certain kind of like a, not just the, it's not about pride. It's like, it's not about being proud of being white. It's just being, just being able to openly talk about it and embrace it somehow. You mean shame here in the United States? Yeah, in the United well, States. Well, yeah, I mean, I certainly see, it, it, it's, it's almost like there's something inherent about being white that's, that, that makes you a certain way by default. And, and then it's just like, how do you, it's just hard to, it's hard to deal with that in the sense that you're, you're, you're your own individual person and there's nothing necessarily about my whiteness that, that makes me a certain way. Yeah. Or if anyone yeah, says yeah. there's anything about my whiteness that makes me a certain way, I just, I, I have a tough time just understanding that because, you know, it's, it's not something that I chose. It's not something that any white person chose or yeah, any yeah, person yeah. of any color chose. No, but it's a way, but there's a way of talking about it, right? So for, for example, in this class, like in teaching, I can go back 30 years and I want to come to the two of you. When if I talk to white people and I say, and I say, Hey, tell me about yourself a little bit. Going back 20 years, 30 years, nobody ever would ever say, Oh yeah, well I'm white. It's just like it's not even part of the consciousness. It's just like, you know, it's like drinking the water. You don't really notice that you're white. It's just not part of it. It's not, it's not in the conversation to even acknowledge it. You don't look in a mirror and, and recognize that what you're seeing is a white face here. But in the past 10, 15 years for sure, it's, there's just a, there's this greater awareness among white Americans that they're actually white Americans. They're not just Americans, they're white Americans, right? And what goes, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Like, you got to be able to follow that up with, yeah, and white people have done some really awful things, and I'm privileged. Like, you learn that, like, right off the bat. Like, yeah, I'm white. Yeah, I'm privileged. I have white privilege. You, do you guys, do you guys talk about white privilege? In Australia? I wouldn't say as much. Um, you notice that here? It's more talked about here. And I wonder if it persists more here than it does, but I don't think I can fully comment on the extent in which it persists. It obviously persists, exists in Australia. Yeah. And it still exists. But also, it's definitely, from as long as I've been here, more talked about. And yeah. I ever talked about it back home with anyone. Yeah, like, you've never talked about it back home with anyone? You don't talk about white? It, white people don't talk about their privilege? I didn't talk about I wouldn't say it's not talked about. It's just not talked about on the same scale. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For here, the scale is just, my yeah. God. If you have a race group, like, if you put a, a diverse group of people in a, in a circle and you have, have them start talking about race, 
the white people are going to just start with the privilege, unless they're part of Young Americans for Freedom or conservative or something. They're immediately going to just talk about the privilege. Like, that's just part of it. And you can't not. You can't talk about being white without talking about your privilege. Bro, do you have that? Do people talk about, ever talk about that concept of white privilege? Do you see that anywhere? I don't really see it at all in Israel, yeah. to be honest. Everybody's just kind of like, I don't know. Everybody's kind of in the same boat after like the Holocaust. So everybody is just kind of like, oh, nice to everyone. But actually, they aren't nice. Or not nice. To yeah, everyone. but that's their, that's their like custom there. No, no, no. But, <laughs> yeah, so I agree with you. Like, I, I, that's been my experience. Yo, yo let me, yeah. you have a question? Uh, what's the tribalism and how does it impact the way people separate, right? So, hmm, what are the major? Yeah, so here's one for you, right? What, do you guys, so you talked about the immigrants, immigration rising, right? Ireland's a white nation, I mean, it's white people. Uh, to what degree do you find, are people interacting with immigrants? Honestly, it's become a political issue at home honestly in the last five years uh -huh. because our homeless crisis is quite big and we're letting kind of immigrants into the country and and some people think that if we have irish people that are living on the streets how are we able to let immigrants in and house them and, and give them money and stuff so it's it's hard because there's one side of it is like yeah like we do have homeless issues and but then there's the other side is like a lot of the times the homeless issues come from drugs. So they're on the streets because of drugs, but the immigrants coming in are, are coming in because there's war in their country. And, and the immigrants coming in are not are mostly not. Well, some are, are white. Right. But mostly not white. Uh, yeah. And in some if they're not white, then it has race entered into the conversation. Yeah, it has. Um, I think. More so, it's just referring to them as immigrants. Gotcha. It has become kind of like the generalization. And it's more so like if a crime happens or whatever, it's kind of like, oh, it was the immigrants. The immigrants. So there's like a code word that you can use for immigrants. You don't have to say black people, brown people, Arabs, Muslims. Yeah. You can just say immigrants. And it's kind of like because Ireland is white, predominantly it just means that basically immigrants can be any race that's not white uh-huh uh-huh and so like um last year there was like a crime happened and it happened to be an immigrant and he went to jail or whatever and then like two months ago another crime happened and because the crime rate is so low in ireland the media gets to a lot of crimes but it t typically only ever tends to be the crimes that are committed by immigrants, even though we know as Irish people, there are a lot of other crimes that Irish people commit too. So, so this race, this like division and with race on the basis of, of or, or this, these clashing on the basis of race just starts to get amplified. I don't know way. if you've seen, but there was a riot in Dublin um, just before Christmas. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. nothing like that has ever happened in a hundred years. Like, there is, and it was Irish people setting monuments on fire, setting public transport on fire, setting everything on fire just because they thought that our government wasn't doing enough for them. For Irish for people. For Irish people, yeah. So for, so for you, because of the nature of it, if white people rioted here in the United States, it's always going to be in the context, going to turn into an anti-black or an anti-brown riot. But there, because of the nature of whiteness is different, that it doesn't become that. It's no, like, it never really became a racism thing. It uh, kind of yeah. just was just like a political statement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. Hey, by the way, that's a really hard question to, yeah. You got another one? All right. Um, if we agree that systematic racism is happening, how do we account for the per capita medium of East Asian? Yeah, well, first off, just LOL. Yeah, I don't think we necessarily... 
systematic racism. Um, yeah. So this is the, can I, re, I'm going to respond to that. Just LOL. Listen, I'm going to put me on the camera. LOL, just LOL. The problem is you can't pick out one. We're not agreeing that systematic racism is all pervasive. So let's be clear about that. Secondly, uh, you can't pick out one or two groups and pick out one or two factors and say like, okay, well, these are existing. And so therefore the racism, this other thing isn't happening. It's not, it's not like that. It's much more complicated. And I think it's much more complicated, just like the things that we're trying to pull out here. So anyway, that's that. Dude. All right. Um, man, I like, go ahead. Do I have to do like a question or can I like answer the question? Which question you want to answer? It was this one right here. And like, I'm sorry, but that boils my blood whenever people like make those comparisons between like races and like capital, like capita, because people think as individuals as like numbers rather yeah. than human being and actual experiences. Because if you think about it, yes, those people are under the oppressed umbrella in the US. Yeah. However, there is a system that works in place for them to be able to weave in and out of that oppressive yeah. state sometimes. Well, I think the issue is that everybody, every group, look, it, this is a sociology class, right? Hang on one second. As a sociology class, we're always going to see these differences in groups, right? I mean, that's the nature of it. And so um, there's always going to, we can see the differences and then we can always come up with some causality for it. So, yes. I was just going to say, Ashkenazi Jews, like as an Ashkenazi Jew, like visibly, most of us have white privilege as in yeah. like, if you're, if I'm walking down the street, like, or like if I walk into a job interview, like, yeah, my last name sounds really Jewish, but like, I mean, we don't face like the same kind of like racial discrimination. Um, and also this is something that a lot of people don't know that the stereotype of like Jews controlling the banks is because actually like long, long time ago, because of like things that were in the Bible about money lending yeah. and how like like Christians weren't allowed to lend money. So they forced the Jews to be the money lenders. So we got forced into banking and that like, it kind of like that comes from oppression, but then it like put us in a position of privilege to be in like jobs that made a good amount of money now. That later became important. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is that because of the discrimination against Jews, anybody who's experienced discrimination, they always are going to end up in these, because you can always buy and sell things. And so these Jews can end up being in these merchant jobs where you're buying and selling. And so business jobs where you're buying and selling. And so that's, that's not because people necessarily choose that. It's because those are the jobs that now today in this capitalist world that we live in, that just seems normal, right? That's what everybody does. But historically speaking, that wasn't the case. Yeah. Okay. Those are two good things. All right. Listen, man. Um, can I ask you a question? Bro, do people make jokes about being white? Do people make jokes about white people? Like I just made this statement about here. There's a lot of humor that's directed at white people. Do you have that in Australia? I wouldn't. I, I can't recall particular times where yeah. we just directed humor towards white people. I don't think it's inherently. Australia is not a very politically correct place when it comes to humor, but I don't yeah. think it's usually. Race isn't really, well, especially, I don't think white people really get are the crux of a lot of jokes uh -huh. from okay, personal experience, you. but also it's. It's tough because I do think white is majority of the population. And that's, so, it's okay. not always going to be, why would you tell a joke about yourself? And yeah. like, pick on yourself almost. Okay, well, here, th this becomes a thing that's much more common with white people. Like, look, if you want to fit in, you can make jokes about ourselves, right? And we can be the butt of, allow ourselves to be the butt of jokes and allow it to happen and allow all sorts of things, 
all sorts of humor about us that we would, we would never put on to somebody else. If you put on to somebody else, you'd be called a racist. But here, it's like, yeah, well, we'll accept that because of the, what Zoe just said, like white privilege. Is that... I don't know if you can really put the two together. I think uh-huh. white privilege and comedy about ourselves, one's a little more extreme, I yeah, feel, yeah, yeah. Yeah. than ultimately a joke is a joke. Yeah, okay. I, I don't... Yeah. Now, there are a few times, and there's, as we said, there's bad eggs everywhere, but people will have bad undertones sometimes, but on the majority of the case, jokes aren't actually meant to so, let me do ask that you this. to you. Is there, like, what are racists in Australia? Like, what are, what, who are they? I don't think you can narrow it down to one group, but, like, growing up, I think it's the same as it is here. Who are the Got racists? You. It's seen as the same. And I wouldn't, I don't know enough about I feel like it's a tough question to answer. So, okay, so, not necessarily. Did, so you disparage people who are not like you, right? So in this case, a racist, in a, a white racist in Australia would be someone who's just disparaging Chinese, people from Papua New Guinea, people, the indigenous peoples. You just disparage them. as. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think you're going too far from what you see here in terms of. Got you. But also, I don't think it's inherently just one person, but or one race, but it's, it's kind of concentrated. But I don't see it persisting as much as you think it would. But ultimately, it's hard to always gauge how much it persists when you're not the one it usually affects yeah, the yeah. most. Yeah, yeah, you, unless you're in the communities. Hey, uh, Andres, and can you just go back to being in Ecuador and, like, the sense of white privilege, like, in Ecuador? Has... There's so much white privilege, right? Like, I know as a white guy, um, as an Amer- my time in Ecuador, uh, I, mean, I, I, sp- I mean, it's maybe like a, y- a year and a half, right? But, like, whoa, I had so much. There was just such a sense of privilege as a white guy. Like, the indigenous peoples, for sure. And, yeah. Is that, is that something that white Ecuadorians or even mestizos, right? But are people talking about that privilege? Well, I, I guess it depends on how you actually define that privilege because, and, and I mean- what, No, 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 hang on. Just the question is, are people talking about white privilege? No. Uh-huh. And not, not that I've seen. I mean, people don't really talk much about race at all, right? Or whiteness yeah. or non-whiteness or anything. I mean- uh-huh. You know, um, there's a lot of people who, you know, don't have enough money to feed themselves every day. So that's pretty much on the bottom of their priority list. Uh huh. So it's so it's not so it, it's kind of interesting that it's once again it's this place where if you look at like listen, man. So I've been in places like in Quito. I've been in I've been in lots of situations where I'm around the elites right? The people that have money and they all look like me. And now I'm, you know, I'm living in the indigenous areas where, you know, these are all the Indian, Los Indios, the Indians, and I'm living among mestizos. And then suddenly I go and hang out with the elites in Quito and the capital. And like, suddenly I'm around white people. It's like, whoa, everyone looks like me. And so, and so what you're saying is, yeah, you know, that's just, but still, there's just not a big conversation about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, there certainly is a, a difference if you're white in Ecuador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's like, yeah. I mean, j- just being myself. Like, m- not even, not even now that that I've sort of made myself part of the culture, and obviously I speak Spanish. And I mean, if I didn't look the way I looked, I, I don't think anyone would be able to necessarily say that I'm white. But yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but if if you go to areas where there's where the socioeconomic situation is a little bit worse, yeah. It's like you, you look different, completely different than everybody. You look different and you're treated differently. Right. And, and I mean, if you go to, a, like, if you look like me or you or any white person, like American, Western white person or European, and you go to like a market, it's like you're, yeah. a, you're not the same. I mean, like you're not treated the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Man. 
No, like it, in market, they'd be happy to try to rip me off, right? Oh, but, absolutely. But in the but listen, but when I would ride the bus, it I would oftentimes I rode I rode this one bus, man. Sometimes every day for all the time, a couple times a day even, and I was often the first one on the bus. And I'd get on the bus and I'd sit down in my seat next to the window, and the bus would start filling up. And every seat would get filled. And then people would stand. And they'd stand in the aisles and whatever. And then eventually, someone would come along and sit in the seat next to mine. And at first, I thought, oh, man, this is like, is this because is this I'm a, they see me as a gringo and they don't like gringos? Or like, is this like some kind of weird like a racism thing or something like what is this until i came to realize these were mostly indigenous peoples so these are those the indians of ecuador right this is where i was i came to realize they didn't want to bother me i'm the white guy like i had a certain status such a status that i could sit in my seat the seat next to me would remain open someone would only sit down at the last minute and these are these are people who who unless they were conscientized and like politicized, these are people who lived a sense of lower status from who I am and from who you are, from any of us up here would be. And so therefore they really just had the sense that I can't sit next to this guy even like, Oh shit. And then once I realized that I knew that was going on, then I would always invite people to sit down in the seat. But that's like the level of that race relations here that maybe we were at in the United States many, many, many years ago, but now, of course, that has clearly changed. So you can see that happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's. Huh. Dude, do you have a question? So, one of the things. Go ahead. Oh, is there? Oh, so, is there's uh, one thing that I was that was in my mind because a lot of y'all seem to agree that outside of the U.S., y'all don't really talk about race a lot, right? Or at least it's not within that topic. So I was wondering, like, how you guys perceive us, you know, speaking race all the damn time, like being pronounced, being very loud about it. Would that be beneficial for like overall equality that's going on, like the immigration? immigration mm. issue in the European mm. lands or you know other continents or would that be more detrimental yo let me start with Rebecca do you feel like there would be like like if in in Ireland dude that's a good question man in Ireland if you guys talk to you're gonna you're starting to talk about race more right with it via immigration but you hear how we do it here we're talking about it all the time do you have a sense that that could be a good thing for Ireland or is it not a good thing I don't see any good coming from it because I feel like in Ireland, like you are who you are and I don't, your skin color doesn't define your social class, your, and like really anything about you. That's for a majority. And I think the more you talk about something, the more issues can arise from it. And I think that we speak about our religion a lot at home and that just causes so much conflict. And now that we're talking about immigration more, that just causes for more different opinions and different opinions then lead to conflict. So I feel like the more we talk about something that can have conflict, the more kind of issues we're gonna have within the country. But, it's, but the question becomes, does talking about it create the issues or do the issues exist and talking about it is your way of digging into them and resolving them. I think the more it's spoken about, it really just depends on how you take what someone says to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like how it's said. If I go into somewhere in Ireland that, into a room, a diverse room and say, like, hi, I'm white, everyone would just look at me like, like, why? Why are you saying that? Mm -hmm. Like, that's weird. Okay, let me ask you this question. A lot of Americans, people here who are not, who haven't traveled outside of the U.S. and specifically have not traveled to Europe or Australia or Israel, right? 
feel like these are white countries. So it's like, oh, I know those countries. Like I know, I know Ireland. I know Australia. I know whatever. The average American. So you now have met, you know, average Americans. Like who think that they know what race, just what your country is, or especially race relations are. And, and I'm always saying, oh, man, you know, you, this is not at all like the United States, right? A few things are similar. But when you hear Americans say, yeah, could you comment on that? I don't know. I don't even have a question. Just a sense that, like, it's like people in Ireland thinking they know the United States. And you fucking, you yeah, know I States. feel like, but I feel like it always goes in a good way when Americans go to Ireland and they think that they know what it's like. But I think that because they perceive it as it's like here, they get there and they realize it's not spoken about, so they just don't speak about it. Like, I think things, that... Things like, things like race, the relations yeah, between Yeah, and groups. I think that... Irish people and American people get along so well and like that's like been my like anyone I've met that from here that's gone to Ireland have said like it's their best time they've ever had or like the best people they've ever met and I feel like conversations that are had between American and Irish people are never race-based or ethnicity based or anything it's I feel like Americans get that that generalization or that kind of they understand that when they yeah. get there it's not spoken about so then got they you. don't speak about it yeah okay I got you that's like that's the hidden stuff, right? Here, we're we have all of these conversations. As I say, can, can, they, you start learning when you're five years old how to talk the language to use, how to talk about these things, and and that's not happening there. It's definitely not happening in Israel, by the way, at all. For, and it's not really happening in Australia, although it's probably starting. I would imagine. I would, I would say it's starting. I think. Yeah. The difference why it's talked about more here, I don't fully know, but I think it might be people are becoming more comfortable with it here yeah. than we are back home talking about it. And ultimately talking about it will, like, man, being here for four years, I'm more comfortable than I was when I lived there talking about it. You're more comfortable talking about it because after being here. After being, and I think that's because the more you talk about it, the more you learn about it. Uh-huh almost you feel educated about it and understand more point of views instead of just your own. And I feel like those conversations could be good, but they take time to build and become yeah. comfortable where you can have a deep conversation about these things. Yeah. So what I'm, what actually one of the things I've gotten from all four of you is that, you know, and what I think we're seeing, like, yeah, Americans talk about this stuff all the time, but, and you're not really talking about it back, and you're in these Four different countries, very much. But, but the, what, I, what I hear from you, though, is you're learning from us to actually have the conversation. So do you take the ideas that you get here and then think back home, think about things differently as a result of that? Can I assume you're, you're doing that, right? Yeah. Bro, you would say that? Yeah, I would say so. Because, um, I mean, I have some family that lives there and stuff, so they never really get the question. So, like, me bringing it over there and, like, wanting to talk about some certain subject is just something that they don't talk about at all. Mm, I and got it's you, like, I got you. it's just kind of a new conversation. And yeah. then they kind of, like, I don't know. Everybody's more so quiet about it. Listen, th- so, okay, so this is absolutely one of the things. I think that Americans, sometimes maybe we push it a little far, but we have really open conversation many americans think we're not i mean a lot of us think we're not very open about it but in fact we are pretty open about so many things man, about these kinds of conversations relatively speaking right and you yeah, i can i had a perspective my sister came to the states for college for three years while i still lived there i could just see from her three years here compared because i graduated right as like all the george floyd stuff was happening and she was living in the u.s and how she was able to talk about that stuff more comfortably and explain it to me compared to like what I was able to do yeah. was so much different. Yeah. And I kind of just noticed it like right as I graduated high school, how her oh, three yeah. years here had, she had developed an ability to talk about this stuff more in a more sophisticated manner than oh, I yeah. can comprehend. All right. Yo, very cool. All right, man. Yo, yo, thanks. Yo. Yeah. Dude.
Thanks, Mom. Thanks, bro. Hey, can you, you can, can you put the slide? Hey, y'all. Hey, take your, take your cameras out. 